So is that related to the, this trade-off? Well, that, I guess that would be the efficiency aspect of it. Yeah. No, okay. it's related to efficiency, right? Not, it's not about inequality, right? Okay. So the less efficient the tax rate would be? Yeah, so the more elastic demand labor supply is, the more people reduce how much they work when you tax them more, the more costly it is to tax them more, the less you want to tax people higher, right? OK. Um, so this is a simple formalization of the equity efficiency trade-off. Notice that as sigma goes to infinity, even for very, uh, except at very high t, then the optimal tax rate is going to go towards 1. So if we have a ton of inequality, we're going to want to have a lot of redistribution. Yeah, Connor. What is, why is it sigma of t? Like, what is the other sigma part? Of well, sigma is how much inequality there is. But remember, if we tax more, there will be less inequality. No, it's, it's, this is an implicit equation. So this is like T star there, too. Yeah. You'll see it in, in the next graph. Um, on the other hand, as the elasticity goes to 0, the optimal tax is going to go to 1, right? And vice versa, OK. So the more inequality and the less elasticity there is, the higher the income tax is, right? So that was sort of a model of what sort of the average tax rate that most people pay is. We modeled it as sort of a linear tax, right? But Obama has recently proposed having sort of an extra tax for the super rich, right? And when taxing the rich, the key thing to notice is that their welfare doesn't really matter very much. Why is that? Well, they're super rich, right? And um, therefore, one over their income is going to be tiny compared to one over the income of most people in the country, right? So if you're earning a million dollars, and that's the poorest person who would be subject to this tax, one over a million is about 1 20th of one over uh, 46,000, right? So these people's welfare is like tw 1 20th as important as the average person in the population. So you can basically ignore that part of it analysis, right? And so that allows us to simplify things by just trying to maximize revenues, right? Imagine that we charge a special <coughs> extra tax to people who are earning over a million dollars, right? And uh, let's call the average income of people earning over a million dollars 10 to the sixth, uh, I bar 10 to the sixth, right? Now again, we're going to have two effects when we raise the tax rate on those people. Um, Charlie, what are the two effects when we raise the, this special surcharge on the rich? Yeah? Yeah? Two effects on our revenue. So I'm just trying to think, how is our, the total amount of money we're raising affected? One way is that people work less, and therefore we get less revenue, right? What's the second way? It's the simplest. When we raise taxes, what happens to the total amount of money the government collects? How so? Yeah, exactly. Because we're charging a higher tax, so the tax, the tax <coughs> amount of money we raise goes up, right? So mechanically, there's increased revenue from everyone who's earning over a million dollars is going to now pay some tax on that. On the other hand, um, if their income falls by the average elasticity, uh, that's going to reduce for someone who's earning income I at the rate of the average elasticity divided by 1 minus the tax we charge them. Um, it will cause the total amount of taxes we collect from those people to fall by the tax rate that we're charging on that marginal unit of income that they're earning multiplied by the income times the average elasticity divided by 1 minus the tax, right? So the total effect is the income that they're earning times 1 minus the tax rate that they're paying multiplied by the average uh, elasticity divided by 1 minus the tax rate they're paying, right? 
but we only earn that on the income that they uh, earn above a million dollars, right? Oh, okay. So optimal taxation is going to equate this thing to zero on average for people who are earning over a over million dollars, right? Okay. So putting averages on this stuff, we get the following formula up here. Um, so the, this is the income weighted average elasticity among those earning more than a million dollars. This is the average income of those earning of above a million dollars. And now let's define alpha to be the average income of people earning above a million dollars over how much that exceeds a million dollars by. Now if we do that, um, what formula are we going to get if we just use the exact same solution that we did before? Uh, King Solomon? Why don't you try to come derive it? It's not too bad. Try uh, use this definition here. Maybe use the board and try to derive the optimal tax rate uh, for using this definition. Okay. Um, so you set this equal to zero, right? right? And you solve for the optimal tax rate. Okay, so then you could just multiply out. You mean divide through by that? Yeah. Yeah. So you divide through that, you get 10 to the 6 over i bar 10 to the 6. Um, so this whole thing here is going to be equal to that. Right. So then you could add that. I'm going to mirror shadow you okay. on, on the board. Okay, so how do we how do we keep going? Um, we want to solve for t. Okay, so you multiply through by one. Oh, you subtract one. Yeah, why don't we first try doing that? Because okay. then, if you put this up there, right? What do you get? You get one over alpha. Right? Yep. If I put that up there, and yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Okay, so we get that 1 over alpha is equal to t <coughs> 10 to the 6, e bar 10 to the 6, over 1 minus t 10 to the 6. Okay, now keep going with what you were suggesting. Well, we've got to get, we've got to isolate the taxes, oh, right? Okay. Um, yeah, so multiply by that, and then. <coughs> okay, so now what are we going to do? Divide by t ten to the six, and multiply. We, by we've got to get it onto one side, right? So we get So there we go. We divide through the, by that and we get this formula. 1 over alpha divided by 1 over alpha plus epsilon 10 to the 6. Now Alpha, as we'll see in a moment, is a very natural measure of the one over the inequality of income at the top end of the district. Sorry, is in uh, one over alpha is a natural measure of inequality at the up, upper end of the income distribution. 
And so alpha is an inverse measure of inequality at the top. So again, we get an equity efficiency trade-off. If inequality goes up, one over alpha goes up, then we're going to have a higher tax rate. Um, if uh, the elasticity goes up, we're going to have a lower tax rate. Turns out that that covariance thing we had before was very closely related to the Gini coefficient. And this is very closely related to the top income shares. So the two different notions of inequality that we talked about, the one that was relevant for the middle range and for the high range, line up exactly with the way we want to tax people on average and at the very top. Okay. So taxes should be progressive if 1 over alpha is greater than sigma, right? So what that says is that as we've been getting more inequality at the top end of the distribution, right, as we've been getting higher income shares, but the Gini coefficient hasn't been going up by very much, we should be having more progressive taxation. If the Gini had been going up relative to the top income shares, then we'd want to have less progressive taxation. Right. But this says strongly that taxation will be getting more progressive in the United States, not less. Right? And the second is that um, the second determinant is whether the rich have higher or lower elasticities than the rest of Americans. If uh, the rich have higher elasticities, you don't want a progressive tax. If they have lower elasticities, you do want a progressive tax. Okay. So now I want to try to calculate in the US what the values of alpha and sigma of t are, right? And so one easy way to do this is to assume that throughout most of the range of the distribution, US income is log normal or something that's very similar, log logistic. And the nice thing about log logistic distribution is this parameter beta is exactly 1 over the Gini coefficient. So that's the sense in which it's very related, uh, the inequality in this. So that's 0.45 in the United States. Mean income is 46,000, and you can calibrate that to the value of the distribution, it gives you alpha about 32,168. So if you throw this into Mathematica and you graph sigma as a function of t, this is what you get. OK. So um, if you now use the formula that we derived, I can graph the left-hand side and the right-hand side for different values of the elasticity. And you get this. So if the elasticity of income is 1, your taxes should be about 25%. If it's 0.5, they should be about 38%. If it's 0.3, they should be about 50%, which if you put together all the taxes that people pay, I would guess that on average, you know, the government is, what, 25% of the GDP or something? So probably the average tax that people are paying is somewhere down here. If elasticity were 0.3, it should be up here. If elasticity were 0.1, it should be up here at about 70% of income should be the average tax. Okay. Calculating alpha is even easier because remember that we said that the top part of the income distribution was a Pareto distribution. And I don't know if you guys remember the question from the midterm, but the question from the midterm basically you had to calculate um, what was the average income of someone who had an income above a certain level? Uh, and how was that related to that level? And it turns out that that, was, that is exactly the quantity that was here. And for a Pareto distribution, that's exactly alpha, the Pareto coefficient. right? And remember that we said that for income distributions, Pareto coefficient were somewhere between 1.5 and 3. And in the US, as the top income shares have been going up, it's been getting a lot closer to 1.5. Um, and you can just calculate that from the Pareto distribution. You can say, what's the average value above 10 to the 6th divided by the number of people that are up there? And if you just calculate it out, you get alpha over 1 minus alpha is the ratio of um, uh, the income, the, is the average income of someone above a certain level divided by that level.